Hi friends and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Josh Palmer and I'm the pastor here at Melton Baptist Church. It's an honour, it's a privilege uh, that you've joined me and I hope and I pray uh, that together as we seek and look into God's word that we learn together and glorify his name through our lives and uh, our behaviour. Uh, so before we start, let's just bow our heads and pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. Father God, we thank you for your son Jesus, who came into this world to show us the way to you. Lord Jesus, be with us. May your spirit enable us to be encouraged through your word. May your spirit lead us together into your presence. Lord, we seek you. We seek your will for our lives. So be with us as you dwell into your word. Give us listening ears and open hearts to hear your voice today. We ask this in the holy and precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Friends, I want to ask you a question. How do you hear from God? Or should I rephrase this question? Uh, do you make time for God in your life? I hope that as we look into our text today, uh, that we'll feel encouraged but also challenged through this. Do you ever look back on your life and ask the question, what might have happened if you chose the other option that you had? Now, history records countless stories of missed opportunities. Many of us look back on certain moments and decisions in our lives and ask what might have been different if we had chosen the other part or the other option that we had. Though we may have regrets, there are other opportunities that we may, uh, may have found and made the most of. Some of the choices we have made were the right ones and we benefited greatly as a result. Some not so good ones. What might have happened if? Let's look into our text today. And we'll try and explore that question a bit more. Our Bible reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, uh, verses 46 to 52. If you've got your Bibles, great, open that with me. Uh, but if you don't, then, then the verses will come up on your screen as well. Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. It says, Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the way. So friends, what is going on in our passage today? We have heard this and read this countless of times, I'm sure. But what is going on? Let's just picture this, okay? This arrived a couple of thousand years ago outside Jericho. This is what's happening. The Jews were gathering for the Passover. 
a time to remember the deliverance from slavery in Egypt. It is a mixture of patriotic spirit and religious favour. They would come from every corner of the world, singing the ancient psalms of Israel. And they would come encouraging one another in joyous ecstasy. It is estimated that not a fewer than a million strangers would have gathered in Jerusalem at the time of Passover. Now, add to this the expectation of a certain Galilean who has raised Lazarus from the dead. Multiplied this with the anticipation of a carpenter's son who had cleansed the lepers. Now mix up the joy over a man who had um, fed thousands of people. On top of all of that, rumours abounded that the Messiah had come and would take his throne upon entering Jerusalem. It was an important moment in the life of Israel. One that should not be interrupted or disturbed by anyone. To this scene enter the dirty old man. His name is Bartimaeus. He sits on the side of the road on a worn out mat wearing a, wearing a tattered cloak. He's unshaven, uncombed and clothed in the dirt and filth of Palestine. His face is placid and his posture resembles that of a hunchback. And when you look into his eyes, you see a vast emptiness. He's also blind. He's deprived of the most valuable scent. He's a stranger to the beauties of nature. He can hear the sounds of voices, but cannot see the faces who speak. He can feel those who come in contact with him, but he cannot behold them. He's perfectly helpless and dependent. He's also poor. Thus, he is not only blind, but, but a beggar. He's pitied for both, but responsible for neither. He begs because he is poor. And his poverty is due to his blindness. Therefore, there is no sin in his begging. Apparently, he receives enough to support a daily existence. But he requires much more for a full life. Keep in mind that Bartimaeus is blind, not deaf. He had heard of Jesus. He may have heard how Jesus had healed a blind man on a previous visit to Jerusalem. He may have heard what Jesus told the followers of John the Baptist. Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. So Bartimaeus sits waiting, possibly thinking to himself, if only I can get enough, close enough, for him to hear me, so I, so I can be made whole. But what if he cannot hear me? What if he does not care about someone like me? Friends, Bartimaeus had no one to introduce him to the Saviour. No one to speak on his behalf. His one and only chance for healing will be totally up to him. So he sat waiting patiently for the Messiah. I wonder, I wonder how long Bartimaeus sat there before Jesus passed by. I wonder how much of his life was wasted because he did not know how to find Jesus. Bartimaeus now begins to hear the crowd grow louder. He's told that it is Jesus of Nazareth passing by. He cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. We read in our passage, many in the crowd began to rebuke him. They tell him to be quiet and let Jesus alone. 
How dare a lowly beggar try to stop Jesus from his appointed time at this appointed place? Bartimaeus was to them a pest, a nuisance. His wailing was disturbing them as they listened to the great teachings of this rabbi Jesus. They were all hurrying to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And the reason that Jesus had no time for people like Bartimaeus, that's what they reasoned as. To them, Bartimaeus must be a great sinner because of his poor, blind state. Otherwise, God would have blessed him with wealth and health. But despite the discouragement of the crowd, Bartimaeus draws the conclusion that he is qualified for Jesus to help him. He probably reasoned, Jesus heals the sick, I am sick. He heals the blind, I am blind. He saves sinners, and I am a sinner. He finds the lost, and I am lost. He helps the poor, and I am poor. He feeds the hungry, and I am hungry. I qualify. We read the crowd continued to try to silence him, but he shouts again, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still. He did not simply pause, he did not slow down and glance at the beggar. Jesus stood still. Friends, have you ever cried out to the Lord? Have you ever wanted something so bad that you would risk ridicule and rebuke? Have you ever had a dream so powerful that not even the world itself could stop you from calling out? If you haven't, then you aren't quite ready for what happens next. For only those who are willing to persevere in the face of obstacles can make their voices be heard above the din of this world. If fate begins with a question, it grows with a cry for mercy. Now what happens next is one of the most powerful events in all of scripture. Jesus stops. You see, Jesus was on a journey. As he stood still, the shadow of a cross fell at his feet. He's making his last sorrowful trip to Jerusalem. In just a few days, the cheers of this crowd will turn to jeers and curses. He knew that in a few days, he would carry that cross to Calvary. He's in the middle of the most stressful trip of his life, surrounding by a screaming crowd. Yet among all the personal anxiety and commotion of the world and the crowd, he heard a single voice cry out and he stood still. And he stood still. He was going to provide a way of salvation for the entire world and he stood still for a single individual. Above the cheering, he hears one solitary man crying. And the parade comes to a screeching halt. Call him. Do you know, he still lets the world wait today when, he, when we call upon him. The Son of God is willing to stop to hear you when you pray. He knows your questions. He hears your cry for mercy. And now he's willing to put other things on hold for you. Amidst the huddle, hustle and bustle of life, can you hear the voices of angels saying, Cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. In the moment of truth for Bartimaeus, he makes a tremendous leap of faith. Bartimaeus sees the opportunity 
Not only was Jesus passing, he was passing by. He would never again return to Jericho. Bartimaeus may have feared that Jesus would not hear him and pass on by. Casting of the cloak, which, which is the only world he had known for so many years. He leaves the side of the road and enters life again. Pursing Jesus was the most important thing in Bartimaeus' life. Now when we read this face casting off his cloak, he basically threw aside his livelihood to encounter Jesus. Bartimaeus demonstrated his faith in Jesus through repentance. He turned his back on his old life and followed Jesus. The Gospel has a lot to say about repentance, my friends. It is essential to salvation. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. Bartimaeus said, Rabbi, I want to see. Bartimaeus had never met Jesus, and yet he answered the question with a profound reply. Rabboni. It's the same word that Mary Magdalene used in John's Gospel when she recognised Jesus raised from the dead. It means my rabbi. It is a term of affection, of commitment to the teacher. The radical faith of Bartimaeus is already evident when he makes his request. I want to see. Having recognised his remarkable faith, Jesus heals the man saying, Go, your faith has healed you. Friends, what well, model of true faith? Here is a man willing to step out from the world he had known all his life, willing to cast off the past and reach out for a bold yet uncertain future, willing to put his trust in the words of one who claims to be the Son of God. Yet it is this kind of faith that breaks through the darkness and grabs hold of the light. So question for us, are we willing to leave the roadside? Are you ready to give up the comfortable cocoon of the life you have been living? Can you cast aside the self-righteousness, the pride and the shackles of sin? If so, be ready to answer him when he asks, what do you want me to do for you? And remember to ask for grace and not for glory. Rabbi, I want to see. Bartimaeus squints and opens his eyes to the world. He sees first the smiling face of the one who had brought a dead dream to life. Go, your faith has healed you. Go. But Bartimaeus does something here. He left the side of the road for good. And he began the journey of life with Christ as his guide. He follows him. This is the story of Bartimaeus, but it could be the story of any of us. For all of us have blind spots in our lives. Each of us, at one time or another, has found ourselves strolled alongside the road of life. Sin has reduced us all to being beggars outside the city gates of heaven. But here is good news for us. Jesus is still passing by. He's still walking the highways and, and byways of life, looking for those whom life has passed by. His ears are open to cries for mercy. He's still willing to stop for those who seek his grace, my friends. When he calls, will you have your priorities right? Will you be able to answer when he asks, 
What can I do for you? Would you be able to say, Lord, I want to see? But once he has healed you of your blindness, are you willing to follow him down the disciples' road? Bartimaeus, when given the chance, my friends, he took her. He took that leap of faith into the Saviour's arms of love and a new life. Friends, on one fateful day, Jesus passed his way and he changed the life of Bartimaeus forever. But Bartimaeus did not know how close he came to missing his miracle. Had he procrastinated, he would have never had the opportunity to be touched by the Master. He would have spent the rest of his days regret regretting his missed opportunity. In fact, his neglect would have had eternal consequences. You see, Jesus would never pass through Jericho again. The crowd were telling him to be quiet. Friends, we are sometimes shy and timid about standing up for Christ in the midst of all that that's going on. We need to remember one thing and this promise. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My friends, Jesus is with us. Do we seek him earnestly? Do we pray to him knowing that he is there for us? Bartimaeus sees that opportunity, seeking God, seeking Jesus for his healing. Question is, are you going to? I hope and pray that you would, you would seek God in your life, but also know that he's there for you. Shout out to him. Pray to him. He listens, he hears, and he answers, just like he did for Bartimaeus. May God bless you, may God keep you safe, and let's just bow our heads and, and pray together. Lord, thank you for revealing your unconditional love to us through your word. Lord, as we go about the rest of, the rest of the day and week, Open our eyes that we may see wondrous things in this world. Lord, help us to walk according to your word and not by what we see. Father, I pray that help us not to turn our eyes towards worthless things, but I pray help us to focus on our Lord and Saviour, Jesus. Lord, we praise you for the vaccines that are going out. I pray for all those who are administering it and those who are receiving it. May you be with them. And those who are waiting patiently, Lord, may you be with them in their waiting too. Lord, may your Spirit inspire us. May your Spirit lead us. And in the midst of all our troubles of lives, Lord, help us to keep strong in faith, hope and love. Grant us the courage and perseverance to be good people, good neighbours. Lord, just like Bartimaeus, may we seek you. May we, may we cry out to you. And may we know that you are listening to us. So, Father, be with us and keep us safe. I ask this in the holy and precious name of our Lord and Saviour, who taught us to pray, saying these words. Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, let's say the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us evermore. Amen. So if you've got any prayer requests, please do email me at melchambaptistchurch at gmail.com. And thanks again for joining me. May God bless you and I look forward to us meeting again next week. Take care.